All right, so we've named them. Let's look at what they look like uh, when they graph them, and we can tell certain things about uh, their graphs without ever having to uh, plot points or to graph them on a calculator or whatever. And there's two things that can help us get an idea of where things are going. The first of those two is turning points. Now, turning points indicate a place where you sort of stop and go over. A uh, roller coaster has the best turning point. You're going up that little uh, mountain or whatever and the clickety clack of it all and then all of a sudden you start going back down. This point right here would be the turning point. Now if I were just to have a regular linear equation like this this is some version of y equals x something or other. This one actually looks like y equals x but uh, in that case there's no turning points. It's going up the whole time. This is the most uh, insanely boring trip ever because it's like the car got stuck. There's nothing going on. Now if I have x squared and some other stuff, I probably have something that looks like this. Much more interesting. You go down and it doesn't stay going down. So you end up with a turning point. And right there it is. Now the value of the turning point is uh, simply that it can uh, help differentiate the graphs. It also helps it match the the values of the numbers, but I mean, why not, right? Uh, well, what happens if you would have something that's an x to the third derivative, dot, dot, dot? You get this kind of thing. This is a dramatic version of one. So as you can see here, you have a turning point here and here. It's going up, and then it's going down, and it's going up again. So that's x to the third, and then you deal with x to the fourth, and this has to be a derivative of x to the fourth as opposed to the actual uh, x to the fourth parent function, because the parent function just sort of looks like this one. It's just on the line, and it's a lot. It's compressed, but uh, it doesn't have the look that you'll get out of what the one I'm about to draw. You tend to get this sometimes when you add more parts to it. It's like this really weird sort of W thing. In this case, I'm dealing with a turning point, a turning point, and a turning point. Now you may notice that there's some relationship here seems to be between the degree of the polynomial, so whatever the exponent is on the biggest number, and the number of turning points. When I have one here, I don't have any. When I have two, I've got one. When my degree is three, I have two. When my degree is four, I have three. And that's there is some relationship there. If the value of the largest variable, the exponent of the largest variable is greater than or equal to 1. This doesn't work for negative exponents, and it doesn't work for exponents of 0, or constants, or anything. Then, the most turning points that you can have is represented by n minus 1. So, it is to say that if you have x to the fourth, the most turning points you can have is three. Now that doesn't necessarily mean you have to have three, because like I said, you just go ahead and graph y equals x to the fourth for yourself on a calculator somewhere. You'll see it doesn't really do that, but it doesn't necessarily mean that that's uh, limited by that number in terms of like you have to have that number. It just means that's the most you can have. You can't have four turning points for x to the fourth, uh, unless it's a really strange situation that I'm not thinking about right now, but there it is. So that's turning points, which leads into the idea of end, uh, end behavior. Now, when we talk about the different types of graphs, we might have this one. And when we talk about end behavior, it's sort of like a, a worm. You want to talk about kind of what the head is doing, what the other head is doing, because worms don't really have a head at all. So this one's sort of slinking out this way, and this one's slinking out this way. So we would say this is an up and down in behavior. Now, in a related note, if I have this, this is the opposite of that. That would be a down and up. You always kind of read these from left to right. That's just the general rule that we that people tend to use. Now if I have a say I have an x to the fourth this is an up and up and then we'll just do an x squared here. This is a down and down. What good is that? The value of it is that you can actually find out um, something about what the graph looks like if you have a few points and then you know something about the end behavior. I get a general idea in my head of what it looks like. Well, can you use what the graph, uh, what the 
polynomial looks like to determine end behavior ahead of time? Absolutely. And there's uh, two things that you look at. The first of those two things is that you want to look at the leading coefficient, so the value of a. So if the value of a is positive, I'm actually going to rewrite that as positive a just to make it look how I want it to look. I have no idea why. There's no real motivation in my head about why I'd want to do that. But if I have a positive a, which in this case, if I have y equals, let's say, 3x squared minus 2x, the a value would be right there. It's the thing, in, it's the coefficient in front of the largest term. If uh, the other option, of course, is that a is negative. Um, from there, I also want to look at the degree. So the n is even. or the n is odd. So in this case I've got an even n. Now, generally in my head it gives me an idea uh, if I just look at two basic graphs. So I'll look at the y is equal to x squared graph. I'm not even going to put it on a plane. And then a y is equal to x to the third graph. This is what they look like just in their native state. Now you'll notice that when I have an even number, uh, so up here, sorry, an even number n value, then I tend to uh, start by going up, like the end on one end is always up. So uh, that's generally the way that it goes in terms of, it'll. I should say that it starts and ends in the same place. I don't know what I was thinking. Um, on the flip side of it, if I have an odd number n, it means that it goes in different directions from one to the other. The reason is because, of course, uh, the turning number of turning points is determined by the degree minus 1. So in this case, I would have minus 1, so one turning point. So if I go down, I'd go back to where I started. If I have x to the third, I've got two turning points. So I'll turn here and then back the other direction again. So I'm going in the direction, sort of in the direction I started to go originally. So they'll be going opposite each other. So if you have an even number uh, of on your degree, it means that your values for um, your end behavior is going to either be up, up, or down, down. And then if you have an odd number, you're going to deal with uh, sort of a mix of the two things. And then that's when the positive and negative a values come into play. This is y is equal to x squared, but if I change it to y is equal to negative x squared, it's going down. So in the situation where I have an even uh, number as my degree and I have a positive uh, a value, then I'm going to say that it's probably going to be an up and up. So one end up, the other end up. If I have that same scenario and it's a negative in the beginning, I can say it's probably a down down. So that applies to x to the fourth, x to the sixth, x to the eighth. I can make that statement about anything that has an even number uh, degree as the uh, degree of the polynomial unlike if I have an odd degree like x to the third. Now you'll notice x to the third, since it has two turning points when it's positive, it tends to go down first. I mean, the graph itself goes up left to right, but the end itself go, will go down and down and down forever. So if I have a positive, this goes down. But because it turns twice, at the end of all things, it ends up going back up. And uh, as a sort of a counterbalance to that. If you have an odd number where you'd you know, be going these, these directions that they're going, in a negative scenario it means that you're going to go up first, or the end is going to go up, because y is equal to negative x to the third sort of looks like this, and then it's going to go down. Which makes a lot of sense because the ultimate uh, odd number uh, degreed idea is a regular graph. So y equals x. If you have a positive x, then it goes up, which means you have a down and then up. If you have a negative x, it does this, and so it's an up and then a down. I mean, you know, it just makes sense. Use those as your sort of ideas so when you get to x to the seventh or something, it's not so scary. I tend to think backwards in my logic. Let's do a couple. I think maybe you'll get a better idea. So what we're going to do is look at one so I'm going to do y is equal to 5x to the third minus 2x, something like that. Um, I need to tell, or I want to know what, what the end behavior is, and it gives me uh, some idea of 
you know what the graph's going to end up looking like. First off, I'm going to realize that my n value is 3 because that's the degree of the polynomial, which means my number of turning points being n minus 1 would be 2. So that means I'm going to have an opposite relationship. It's either going to be up down or it's going to be down up. Similarly, I'm going to do uh, a my a here is positive. So since it's a an odd number, I know that if it were a regular line and it was positive, it would be going like this. I know that this tells me that it's going to end up doing that same behavior. So if, if I had y to the x, it would look like this is what I'm trying to say. And that's an odd, just like this one is. You'll notice that it goes down and up. This says that's not going to change. So I can say that it's going to be a down and an up. So let's get a calculator and graph really fast, hopefully theoretically. Saying I'm going to do something fast is this whole other universe. So I'm going to do 5x to the third minus 2x. See I told you it was easier said than done because I forgot to click out. I always forget to click out. Don't be like me. So I can graph it and I'm hoping for sort of a down Yep, see, it starts down and then it goes up, just like I predicted. On the other side of it, y is equal to negative 3x to the fourth plus 6x squared, or 6x to the third, I'm sorry, minus 2x squared plus six, something like that. I don't know, it doesn't really matter. Uh, now my n value, of course, my degree is four, so that means the number of turning points that I have is actually three, which means it will go back in the same direction it started. So if it's an up, it's going to continue to be an up at the end of it. If it's a, a down, it's going to be down. I also know that my a in this case is negative, which I, since this is x to the fourth, I'm going to pair it to x squared, and I know a negative x squared looks like this, so I'm going to say that it's probably a down and down. So let's check. Here's my calculator. Negative 3x to the fourth power plus 6x to the third minus 2x squared plus 6. I did it again. I'm just going to clear it all out because there's no point in continuing it. There, plus 6x to the third minus 2x squared plus 6. I'm hoping for a down and down, otherwise this is going to be ridiculous. So as you can see, I got pretty much what I thought. It's a down and a down. And there's like a lot of little waviness going on here. So uh, I was correct. So there it is. That is the idea of um, the types of behaviors that you can figure out just graphically that you can figure out. So specifically we talked about turning points and we talked about end behavior.